Here at Paradise Lanes in Tacoma for the season finale. It's the Pack Northwest Invitational. Uh, great, great action in both divisions of match play. And we got one for sure title match going on and one potential title match. The potential one is right in front of your face here as Ashton Yamasaki and Liam Hartman are playing each other for the fourth time. Liam is the last bowler with only one loss in this triple elimination match play format. That means Ashton has to win this game over Liam to force one final game, which would be the fifth between them. That's how that breaks down when you got two bowlers kind of dominating to settle things. Liam wants to win this game to win his very first career title, which would come with $1,000. $500 to the runner-up. So big bucks on the line. Ashton joining to join the 10 career JBT title club. So plenty here going on in the scratch division. <coughs> to the right. <coughs> Excuse me. To the right. <coughs> wow. To the right is the one for sure title match. This is girls scratch. Sienna Stoner qualified second in the main invitational day. Both great. <coughs> Didn't know so good at match play. Piper Chalmers did. She survived all the way to uh, the top four in the scratch division finals. And Sienna had to wait all that time to bowl the scratch girls scratch finals. And as it started, Piper started with the front four before a fifth frame open. Santa's got a couple opens going on here, so if she spares this up, she will trail by 39 through six frames. Hold on Rome today, 45 feet, pretty flat. Bowlers have had to constantly adjust. Pair to pair is always fun, especially around here. With a 1 through 8 being a different surface than 9 through 32, that's a factor. All the bowlers are well aware of that coming in. So constant adjustments, two of the very best going at it here. I saw Ashton dominate yesterday. Not dominant today, but has done what it has taken. His only losses have come against Liam, and that was in consecutive games 6 and 7 when they were uh, the only bowlers with less than two losses. So they keep on seeing each other. Liam won twice, like I said, and then Ashton stayed alive by eliminating Pucks the card, while it was Liam who eliminated Piper. His only loss came way back in round two to guess who? Ashton. Three in a row, rebounding from opens in the first and third. He got that big strike in the fifth, meaning they figured out the left-hand lane. Can he hold what he figured out? here in the seventh and get himself right back in this game. The last thing you want to do is give a bowler as good as Ashton a second or a fifth chance, however you want to look at it. Great stuff here. Thank you so much to Kim and the whole team at Paradise for having us. Good turn out yesterday and an exciting finish today. To the left, Handicap's going to go from four to three. Mary Sicard and Haley Johnson, yesterday's handicap winner, are playing each other. The loser will be out. There is the four bagger. To the left of that, Kara Wilcox and uh, Logan Winchell are playing each other again. Logan had a chance <clears throat> last game to eliminate Kara and stay undefeated. He needed all three of the gems to do it, got the double, but did not get the fill ball. That was a pivotal. Pivotal? P pivotal, yes. A pivotal. It was like a pitiful, pivotal frame. It was a really important frame. It was awesome. As <laughs> Ashton slaps the bottom half of that 10 feet. I'm tired and I haven't even thrown a ball. I don't know how that, these guys do this through five games of qualifying. This is round nine of triple elimination match play. On a brutal pattern, you think this isn't a sport? Come out here and try this. And leads by 13, can extend to 23 with a strike here in the eighth. Not to be. Slim margin for error each side. If you miss it too much left at all, it's going. Super high, if you miss a little to the right, it won't even think about the head 10 or even worse, 2 8 10. As it should be for a major title. Premium on execution and staying clean. He'll do that if he can spare up this 3 6, which he does. 
What an opportunity here for Liam. Did not win a handicap title before going scratch. Has not yet won a scratch title. Can he shut the door? Oh, man. We're reacting to a seven pin from Logan Ware from the corner that is as on the edge as it could possibly be. He could he could literally puff and puff and blow that seven pin down. Oh, and he still found a way to miss it. And Liam did not take it, uh, that giant opportunity there. Seven count, two, four, five, and the eight. For three hours now, we haven't seen bowlers come through spectacularly and not quite get the hits they need. So tough. Spared up, he'll trail by 15 with four minutes to go. Nice job with the spare. All kinds of ways to chop it, two, four, five. Dead hard and straight. Good tip for you guys on sport patterns. Don't even think about hooking it at clusters like that. Three, six, nine, ten, maybe. Uh, Piper in complete control over to the right. She's gonna win girl scratch. She was already in a prohibitive lead in the season long point race, so she's gonna win invite and bowler of the year. In girl scratch and fourth in the main tournament. So fantastic day for her. Best I've ever seen Sienna bowl though. Second in the main tournament. Like I said, wow. Four nine last to fall in the ninth. The pairs flip flopped and now Liam likes the left hand lane, but he's got to finish on the right hand lane. Will it matter though? Liam can finish with 223. Austin Ashton would still need to double to shut out Hardman this game and force the final. There's the first. Strike of the ninth. First one of the tenth. And Count will win the game. Meanwhile, Piper's going to blast a big one over there. Two thirties right now, 244. She can get two more in the 10th. That's going to win a lot of matches. Uh, I don't know who's going first. See, again, just like yesterday, Ashton plays up on the lane, even though that's the lane that the ball is not in the way on. He wants to keep his feet the same way. Pair. Two schools have thought of that. He could stand back in his normal spot and take a totally different approach with his feet. He instead wants to keep his rhythm the same on both lanes. I think that's what I would go for, too. Oh, my goodness gracious. Sienna just finishing out the string there. That's tough when you got to wait that long to play that trick. Nice spare from Yamasaki. There was, I didn't even realize the apron was down. He says he saw it. The peanut gallery is questioning whether he saw that eight. I didn't, to be honest. Tough finish for uh, it's the end of a 244. A champ. The ball shouldn't matter too much here. Well, a perfectly respectable 216. This ball kind of got rolling for Liam when he needed all three in the 10th to beat Ashton, and he rolled a two pin on the first ball in the 10th and dead flush the last two to get that win, which sort of turned the tables of this tournament in Hardman's favor. And he's got that same opportunity again. Must strike twice to win the invite. Anything less, they'll bowl again. Bloody moment. Brilliant. Left. Too far left. He doesn't get the hit this time. They're gonna go the distance. Ashton's 
Captain's like, no. Bud somewhere is like, no, because he's still got to play E17. No, Bud's like, no. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh -huh. I spill on my tongue? I did. Sadness. All right, I don't know what the handicap differences are here, so it doesn't make particularly good commentary. I'll try and find out. You run this show. Still bowlers left. We'll see what happens for the fifth time. Liam versus Ashton for a thousand bucks. Part two coming up.